Have you ever asked yourself what was the Garden of Eden like? Eden, we understand, is the name of a region of the earth when God first created the world. And uh, the Hebrew word translated Eden is taken to mean pleasure or delight. And uh, in this area, God planted a garden. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 to 10, Now the Lord had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the trees of life and the tree of knowledge of good and the evil. And uh, a river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters. Now, um, from this brief description uh, from Genesis 2, 8 uh, to 10, we note several things about the Garden of Eden. Number one, we understand that the garden was planted and planted by God himself. It was a, Number two, it was a mankind's first home. Number three, it contained incredible variety with all kinds of trees. Number four, we understand it was a beautiful place as the trees were pleasing to the eye. Number five, it was a fertile and fruitful place. Number six, it provided nourishment and nutrition as the trees were good for food. And number seven, it was naturally well watered. And uh, later on, we read that there were all kinds of animals in the garden. Uh, of course, we see this one in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19 to 20. It tells us, And uh, out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them, and whatsoever um, Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave uh, to all cattle names. Okay, So we have the note that Adam and Eve were unclothed in the Garden of Eden. Uh, likewise, they, they did not have clothes. Think about uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 25. And they were naked, both of them naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Are you seeing the point here? Now, this one indicates that they needed no protection from whatsoever. The environment, including the climate, was perfectly suited for humanity. And uh, we do not know the exact location of the Garden of Eden, but the Bible's description of the area associates it with the uh, four rivers and uh, an abundance of resources, including fine gold and gemstones. Because the Bible tells us in Genesis 2 verse uh, 11, the name of the first is Pison, that is, uh, it which compasses the whole land of Havila, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good, and there is uh, Bdelium, and the onyx store, and the name of the second river is Gihon, and the same is it that compasses the whole earth. You see, so we know that these things are true about uh, that garden. We understand very well that the Garden of Eden was a place where man could meet God, the Creator. Okay, the Bible says that, uh, and I quote, He was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Okay, Genesis 3.8. God used to walk around in uh, the cool of the day and Adam and Eve could uh, be with Him and converse with Him. Also, we understand that the Garden of Eden was a place of total provision. God had seen to Every detail in uh, designing a home for humanity created in his own image, Genesis 1.27. And also Adam and Eve lacked nothing and were free to eat from any tree in the garden, Genesis 2.16, except only for one. And you know the one is uh, the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil. And of course we understand that the, the, their diet was vegetarian. They never used to eat meat because the Bible says in Genesis 1.29, And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb-bearing seed which is, is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of tree-yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So these guys were vegetarians. Huh? Something else we have to ponder here is that uh, the Garden of Eden was a place of unity and fellowship. 
because we see Eve was created in the garden and, and brought to Adam. Genesis 2 verse 21 to 22. And uh, of course we see Ada, Adam had a helper suitable for him. Okay, Genesis 2 18. And the unity and the fellowship enjoyed by the human couple was a reflection of the unity and fellowship they both enjoyed with God. Something else to understand is that the Garden of Eden was a place of work and fulfillment because when God placed Adam in the garden, he gave um, the man a task. Adam was to work in the garden and uh, to take care of it, okay, according to Genesis 2.15, because what God had planted, Adam was just to maintain. And this task was an addition uh, to Adam's mandate to be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth and subdue it and of course to rule the fish of the sea and birds of the sky and every living creature that moves on the ground. Genesis 1 29. And uh, we understand that mankind was blessed by God, given responsibility and uh, provided work that was uh, meaningful, creative and beneficial. And likewise, uh, the Garden of Eden was the setting for the first marriage. It is in the Garden of Eden that uh, marriage is defined as the union of one man and one woman who have left their parents to form a new family unit. Remember Genesis 2.24 where the Bible says, A man shall leave his father and mother and they cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. Likewise, the Garden of Eden was a place of innocence. Originally, we understand no sin was in the garden and nothing would cause anxiety or unrest and Adam and Eve nakedness all right suggested that they were at ease with one another without any fear of exploitation or potential for evil think about Genesis 2:25 okay and also the garden of eden was a place of life it was a place of life remember the Bible told us that in the midst of the garden was a tree of life, Genesis 2.9. And uh, we understand that Adam and Eve had free, unhindered access to it. There was life. Likewise, the Garden of Eden was a place of testing. Also in the midst of the garden was the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Genesis 2.9. And the fruit of which the uh, God had said unto Adam that he could not eat. He says, and I quote, You must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of a good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Genesis 2.17 So, it was one of the prohibitions in the garden of Eden not to eat from the tree of a knowledge of good and evil. And God had created Adam and Eve to be free with a moral sense and the ability to make decisions and choose for themselves. And the presence of a forbidden tree provided the opportunity for Adam and Eve to make a real necessary choice to either obey or to disobey. Unfortunately, Adam failed the test. And the serpent in the garden used by Satan tempted Eve with a false promise of blessing and the woman ate of the forbidden fruit and in turn gave the fruit to her husband and she also partook. Both were disobedient to the word of God and the consequences of their sin were disastrous for them and uh, for all their descendants. Genesis 3, 1 to 19. All right. So they lost their fellowship with God and they lost their home and they lost their innocence. Something else to understand is that the Garden of Eden became a place of atonement and uh, hope. And uh, we understand that the sin of Adam and Eve was met with God's judgment. But in the midst of the judgment was mercy. Okay? God covered their nakedness of which they were now ashamed with animal skins. Genesis 3.21. He tells us about this. He says, Unto Adam also, uh, unto his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothed them. And uh, he gave them good news. In his judgment on the serpent, God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and uh, hers. And she, uh, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Genesis 3.15 And this verse acknowledges the curse on mankind and their related strife. And it also promises God's provision of a savior who would battle with the serpent and win. 
this savior would be the offspring of the woman. Eventually, Jesus, the virgin-born son of God, came to destroy the devil's work. Remember, the Bible tells us in 1 John 3, 8, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. From the beginning, God had the plan of salvation in mind. And no sooner had sin entered the world that he formed us of that plan. Something else very interesting here is that uh, the Garden of Eden is a place to which we long to return. God had to force Adam and Eve to leave the garden and he posed a formidable cherubim to guard against unauthorized re-entry. Okay? Think about Genesis uh, 3, 23-24. It says, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed uh, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which uh, uh, turned every way to keep away, uh, to keep the way of the tree of life. And uh this is to tell us that the loss of our paradise garden has stayed with us and forms part of our deep longing for what is good and pure and eternal. Ecclesiastes 3.11 The Bible says, He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God makes from the beginning to the end. Something else interesting about this garden is that uh, the garden will be restored at one point and our access to the eternal garden of God is based on our restored relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Okay? The Bible tells us in Luke 23 verse 40, it says, But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed just, uh, and we did justly, for we received the due rewards of our deeds? And this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when you get to paradise. Hmm. Okay. So now we understand that uh, paradise would be opened up for everyone when Jesus dies for our sins and that is what even that thief was telling the other one that there is somewhere where this son of God is going paradise and would open it for all of us okay so now something we have to understand think about Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 it says whoever has ears let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches to the one who is victorious I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is the is in the in the paradise of God. You see, the garden would be opened once again. Of course, in the New Jerusalem, there is a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing. All right, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, and it floods down to the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life, bearing twelve crops of foods of fruit with fresh crop each month and the leaves were used for medicine to heal the nation no longer will there be a curse upon anything revelation 22 verse 1 my friends do, do you see this promise do you see this promise it's really really important to understand this because the garden of eden that place of pleasure and delight we lost it because of our sin and uh, god in his mercy and grace will restore it to us on Christ's behalf. All right? And that is the, the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you learned something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post another Bible question. And if you'd like to get saved, maybe, uh, or you need a step-by-step -step order of salvation, that is how to get saved, so that you can uh, well preach to a friend or family, 
or maybe you feel led to support our ministry, please visit our website, keithmuoki.com. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next Bible study.